Hey everyone and welcome back to part six in this series about using Facebook 360 Spatial Workstation with Reaper. Today I wanted to go into a little bit more detail about how to use the Spatializer plugin to place your sounds uh, within the 360 space, particularly with mono signals or stereo signals that aren't necessarily already spatialized. I'm going to go into a little bit more information about how to use ambisonic recordings as well. Uh, so moving over to screen sharing, disappearing off into oblivion and coming over to Reaper. So if I come up to our SPAT1 track, which has our mono information on it, and I open up our effects browser up here, here's our Spatializer plugin. So there's a couple of ways that we can use this. We can either try to automate the whole system or we can do it manually. I'm going to show you the manual way first, and then we'll go into using the tracker and automating the whole process. Uh, which is slightly more unreliable, but still worth learning. Uh, but before we do that, we need to set up Reaper to record this information as automation. So if I come over to our channel strip over here and I click on trim, that brings up our automation dialog box. And this is quite intimidating. There's a lot of options here, but we only need three of them. We need azimuth over here. So I'm just gonna tick this box here, elevation, and distance. So if we tick these three boxes here, you'll see those automatically made those automation lanes visible and armed them. So the next thing that we need to do is come up to automation mode and change this from trim slash read to write. And this is now going to write any automation moves that we make within this plugin to our track specifically on the azimuth, elevation and distance lanes. So these ones here. So I'm just gonna cross that off. That's all set up and ready to go. And you can see here as well, if I get rid of this, you can see on our track that we have three automation lanes activated here. We have our azimuth, our elevation, and our distance. So I'm just gonna open that back up again. Okay. So the manual process is really quite simple. All we need to do is select this little puck here, which is representative of our audio information and move it over to the object that we want it to move with in the video. And then because we have all of our automations set up here to write as we do that, we just need to hit play and drag it with our object to keep it in line with it in the video. Very simple and Reaper's automatically recording this automation for us so that we don't need to worry about it. So if I stop that and we come back over here we can see that Reaper's recorded all of this information to our automation lines. And if I come back to the beginning, so all I need to do now to see that reflected in our plugin is change our automation mode from right back to read mode, exit that, open up our plugin, come back to the start of our session and hit play. And we can see that puck moving around with our object. Really simple, really easy to do, uh, but you will notice that all it's writing is azimuth and elevation information. So what about distance? Well, distance we need to do manually again uh, by adjusting this here and moving it with our object. Unfortunately, this isn't an automated process and that is reflected in the uh, tracking as well, uh, but it's definitely worth doing to add that extra level of realism. So now let's move away from the manual process and start talking about the automated process. So over here we have our tracking selector. We just need to turn that on and then we can readjust the location and the size thusly. So I'm giving it a good area. The higher the resolution of the video, the better the tracker is going to work. So this may not be as reliable because it's quite low resolution footage. But all I need to do now once I place that tracker is hit play and watch it move with my material on the screen. And it's starting to write that information into Reaper as well. Now you will find that there'll be times where this track has slipped. So you can see here that I've moved, it's slightly more drastic movement and there's also a little bit of dirt on the lens. So that's distracted the tracker there. So all we need to do in those situations is pause our session, move that box back over here and click play again, and it should continue tracking. And you'll notice that as I walk off the side of the frame, it continues tracking over to this side. Look, it's stopped again, so I'm just gonna hit pause, move it back there, and hit play, and it'll continue working and continue recording that automation. Now, once we've been through the whole session, we've recorded all of our automation, we've corrected the parts where it slips, all we need to do is turn the tracker off, 
change this automation mode back here from write to read, come back to the start of our session and hit play. And we can see the tracker starts to do its work on our footage here. Okay. So that's how to use the Spatializer plugin to move and manipulate mono or stereo signals. They both work in exactly the same way. But now I want to look at how we can use the Spatializer plugin to add ambisonic material into our session. So here we have our ambisonic file recorded with the Sennheiser Ambio. I'm going to open up the effects browser here. Now, as I covered in the previous video, we need to make sure that we have our Ambio A to B format converter in the signal chain prior to the Spatializer plugin if we haven't converted that material to B format already. So we're going to place our Ambio A to B format in here. I'm going to set it up for the recording that I created. So I know that I recorded in MFire mode and I know that I recorded in AmbiX. So I want to output AmbiX here. Simple as that, really easy to use. You don't really need to play around with anything like anything else in here. You can rotate the microphone if that's something that you want to do. If you found that you've recorded in the wrong direction or that things aren't spatializing properly. But yes, as I say, add this plugin, set it up very simple, and then come over to the Spatializer plugin. Now, the Spatializer plugin for ambisonic material is vastly simplified. So, to get into the ambisonic mode, come up to input and select your ambisonic format, whether it's FUMA or AmbiX. And you'll see these parameters down here. So that's basically doing the same as this big knob here, which is nice and convenient. And that's it really for ambisonic recordings. They're already spatialized. They're already 360. So we don't need to worry too much. We just need to make sure that FB360 knows which format we're inputting into it so that it knows the channel order and spatializes everything correctly. So thank you for sticking around to the end of this video. We've got one more video to go in which we're going to cover exporting our material and bringing it all together and muxing it, new term there, muxing it with our video. So combining them together to create a final thing that we can share online on either YouTube or Facebook. So cheers, I'll see you next time. Bye.